Have you ever had every intention of working on your health goal, but some other temptation came in the way? Have you ever wanted to stop a negative habit just to create more room for your new helpful habit? Then this video is for you. Hello everyone, welcome back to Wells Wellness. I'm happy to see you here. And I just wanna know, how did it go with your SMART goals? Is the information I've been sharing helpful? Let me know in the comments below. So today we'll be discussing something that's near and dear to my heart because I naturally get distracted easy. And I love creating new goals. There's so many things that I wanna try and just overall keep evolving and becoming a better person and a, a healthier person. But I get distracted and I don't know about you, but sometimes it can really get me down. So I have some tools that can help us reverse and minimize our distractions so that we can create the room needed for our healthful goals. The first thing that we need to know in order to minimize this, our distractions is to become aware of our distractions. Sometimes we're not even conscious of what we're naturally doing instead of really being intentional and working on ourselves. So something I wanted to talk to you today about was a formula that, um, again, I got from Atomic Habit, but it gives out this formula of why we have negative habits or any habit to begin with in the first place. So first, we have a cue. Secondly, we have a craving. And third, we have a response. And fourth, we have the reward. Given the formula that we just talked about, um, some of the cues that I have to go on my phone is maybe boredom, procrastination, or wanting to feel connected with other people. There's certain emotions that I can tell that I have whenever I want to go on my phone for leisure purposes. The cue is the emotion and now I'm craving my phone because that has satisfied those needs temporarily. And my response is being on my phone, getting my phone, and the reward is that temporary satisfaction. So what do we do with this awareness of this cycle? I like to think of it as bringing the subconscious into your conscious because our brain naturally goes into autopilot. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but um, you're driving somewhere and then you automatically start driving home just because you're on autopilot. That's kind of how it is with our brain and our habits. So we have to kind of counteract that and be very conscious of everything that we're doing um, so that we're not in autopilot, so that um, we're not given to temptation as easily because we are already on guard for what might come up. So something I um, recently started doing, and I don't do it often, but again, I got it from the book Atomic Habits, is calling out your action. When you call out what you're doing, you're bringing your subconscious into your conscious. So when I'm doing a bad habit or something that I know is not productive, I say it out loud. For example, if I'm on Instagram for a while and I can kind of tell that it's been a little too long and I need to put the phone down, but it's, it's hard to do it, I will literally say out loud, I am wasting my time on Instagram. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I scroll like a few more times, but that satisfaction is gone. It's not as appealing anymore because I'm, again, I'm bringing that subconscious to my conscious where I'm like, I'm able to really judge my actions and judge my thoughts. And now I'm bringing awareness to the cues. You know, my cue is I wanna feel connected. So maybe I need to pull up my phone and call somebody instead of getting a false sense of connection or having that feeling of boredom or procrastination. Okay, well, now that I know that cue, what can I do instead um, to break this habit? How can I create something new and fresh? Because that's gonna be more productive and that's gonna help me feel more peace and feel better about myself when I go to bed. So the next thing we need to be doing is instead of fighting our distractions so much, we need to control our distractions instead of letting our distractions control us, okay? 
Let me say that again. We need to control our distractions instead of letting our distractions control us. So since we already have developed um, that kind of cycle, you can also use it to your advantage. For example, you can do something that's kind of um, like habit stacking in a way where you are deciding, hey, when I am done with so-and-so, I can enjoy Instagram for 15 minutes. And I think I said this on a previous video, but um, you can do this as well, of just setting aside a time frame that you can be on um, your, your vice or your distraction kind of thing, or put like some type of limit on it. Like you can tell yourself, hey, I can do social media or be on my phone from you know, seven to eight, you know, that's like my time frame. So that is a reward for the successful day that I've had. Or, you know, let's say you have a goal of eating healthier and you've been doing well for so long, but that Snickers is calling your name, you know, and maybe reward yourself like, hey, if I do four successful days of eating healthier, I can have a, um, a Snickers or three or, you know, two days, you know, Things like that um, are all geared towards you and um, your continual progress. So it's all up to you. And this leads me to my third point. The third thing that we need to do in order to minimize our distractions is to maximize our goals, okay? When we are maximizing our goals and our thoughts on them and our focus on them, it's really hard to get um, as distracted because we know that those things are gonna come naturally, but how can we pinpoint and be mindful about our goals throughout our day? And now there's another framework that we can use in order to maximize our goals. And according to Atomic Habits, four things that we need to do. Number one is to make your habit obvious. That means when I go to your house, I should be able to see that this is what you're working on. Two, make your goal attractive. You know, if you um, hate going to the gym and your goal is exercise, maybe going to the gym is not the best thing for you right now. Maybe figuring out what make what makes you happy while you're making your body move is it dancing is it you know working out at home with an app or is it walking with a friend you kind of have to figure out what brings you joy and thirdly you want to make your goals easy if your goals are difficult again your brain likes to go on autopilot and just move and just go to the easiest um, thing possible so if you're making your goals all complicated and of course it's probably not intentional um, think of ways that you can make it easier if you want to get to the gym early in the morning or things like that maybe laying out your gym clothes um, the night before so then you don't even th have to think about what you're wearing so you can just get up and go and also even the fact of seeing your um, clothes on the chair, that's another cue for another action so that you can have that craving, that response, and that reward of being productive. And the fourth thing is to make it satisfying. So this is something that's so helpful for me because I have to visualize everything. But what you can do is find a way to track your goals. If you're able to have like some type of notepad or something like that, maybe write off exercise and put like maybe three blocks or whatever. But after you exercise, you wanna cross that out or do something that symbolizes that you're done. And you can do that in such a creative um, ways. I know some people have done marbles in a jar where every time they do it, they put it in an empty jar or um, they do it on their calendar. Something that I've, I've done um, just because I have a dry erase board is sometimes I have a color for any habit. And if I do that habit, I just cross out the day in that color. So it makes my calendar kind of colorful and it makes me happy like, oh, yay, I did it. Um, and I can actually visually see my progress. So I know this um, video has been about um, minimizing our distractions. So what you can do is even take that formula and reverse it. So for example, something that I really struggle with and I'm being transparent here, so please don't get at me, is um, Instagram. But you wanna make it not obvious. 
So what I did was I actually deleted it off my phone. So either I have to physically search Instagram on my Safari on my phone or do it on my computer. It makes it, it's not obvious. I don't see it. So it's not something that I would naturally do anymore if I don't see it. So number two is making it unattractive. So what I talked about earlier of bringing the subconscious into your conscious, I started calling out like, hey, I am wasting my time. And that kind of made it unattractive for me to go on Instagram as much. So you can focus on the negative effects of it. Number three, instead of making it easy, make it uh, difficult to get to. So because my Instagram is no longer obvious to me, it's difficult for me to um, rem consciously remember to go on Instagram or to pull out my computer and get on it. And it's not easy anymore, which makes it unattractive and it makes me not really want to do it. And so obviously um, by saying over and over again and being mindful of um, what's negative about Instagram to me personally, it just makes it unsatisfying, which is the fourth thing. So you can use this formula to enhance your goals, to enhance your thoughts and your focus on your helpful goals. And you can also use the opposite to um, reduce your distractions and the bad habits that we have. So now I wanna hear from you. Do you struggle like I do with distractions when it comes to your goals? If so, what do you do to reduce those distractions? Let me know if there's something that I've missed or some other creative way that you find will be helpful to others that can um, increase their health goals. So please let us know and we'll see you next time.